Native Windows principles are now available in Preview in Azure SQL Managed Instance. Learn how seamless it can be to connect to your managed instances with Windows Auth this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined once again by Sarvani from the security team uh, working on SQL. Sarvani, thanks so much for joining us again today. Hey, thanks, Anna. Thanks. Thank you for having me. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. You always bring some new and exciting and, more importantly, customer-requested capabilities in the security space, and today is no exception. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about native Windows principles, uh, and this is an area like I'm kind of familiar with, but I don't know a lot, and I think probably a lot of people have a lot of thoughts when they think of native Windows principles. So maybe if you could kick us off by telling us a little bit about what these are, why they matter, and, and kind of like what's new and what you all have been working on. Sure, Anna, thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a new feature uh, for SQL Managed Instance, uh, which went public review last week. And uh, I thought doing a data exposed session with you would give more uh, exposure to all customers about this feature and how to use it. Because uh, this is like, a, uh, I would call it as a migration blocker for customers. Uh, and uh, if they have any legacy applications that they need to migrate to cloud, this is going to be their solution, right? So I let me quickly explain what is this feature and how is it uh, working? Just give me a second here. Sorry about that. Yeah. So... What is native principles, right? So as, as we know for SQL, when you connect, whether it's the Azure SQL, SQL managed instance or SQL server, when, when you connect from a client or application, you always have something called authentication types. How do you connect to SQL, right? You can connect using Windows authentication or you can connect using SQL authentication, which is something that our, our SQL customers are doing for several years. And now we also have Microsoft Entra authentication, which is for Microsoft Entra, Entra users. So when it comes to SQL managed instance and Azure SQL database, either customers have to use SQL authentication or Microsoft Entra authentication. A couple of years ago for SQL managed instance, we also introduced Windows authentication you can connect to SQL managed instance using Windows authentication for Microsoft Entra users. So this Windows authentication, uh, which went GA like a couple of years ago for managed instance, really unblocked many customers who had legacy applications that are tied to Windows authentication and they could not migrate to cloud because there is no concept of Windows authentication. But with the Kerberos support, we are able to do that. And we are, like I said, it is GA like a couple of years ago. However, this authentication, supporting Windows authentication itself is not solving the end-to-end -end problem for our customers. So how it works in SQL is when you have an authentication type, so when a connection comes, uh, whether it's a Microsoft Entra authentication or whether it's a Windows authentication, SQL under the covers, it relies on the metadata that we have. Right, So whenever I have to authenticate a user or a login, I have to look at the metadata that I have in the SQL server or SQL managed instance to authenticate those users. So what happens is like if a customer is migrating from Microsoft, uh, let's say from on-premise SQL server to SQL managed instance, once they migrate their databases, they also have to migrate their Windows logins and users to Microsoft Entra logins and users which means they have to drop and recreate all their logins and users which are created from Windows to Microsoft Intra. So this is not just a limitation with the migration, it's migration of logins and users is expected and you have to migrate because micro managed instance does not understand your Windows logins and users. But the challenge comes when customers really have thousands of logins or users that needs to be migrated right there is a there is a head a overhead that that is there apart from the just a overhead there are uh, multiple things that we are also trying to address so 
For example, we have SQL managed instance link where customers can create a managed instance link between your on-prem SQL server to SQL managed instance for a couple of purposes. One, you can just use it as a read-only workloads. Customers can direct their workloads to managed instance link or they can use it as a failover uh, a uh, partner, like for example, you just create a link, you keep it as a secondary, they can use it as a failover partner. They can also use it as a migration path. Basically, you configure a managed instance link between mm -hmm. your on-prem and managed instance, keep data replicating. And then whenever there is a downtime, there is a cutoff, that is when you just fail over and you completely migrate your applications. So these are the different scenarios that they can use managed instance link. However, for example, there is a one scenario where let us say customer wants to create a managed instance link to their existing SQL Server 2017 or 2019 servers. You can do that, right? Of course, you can set up a managed instance link. Now I want to use it as a read-only replica. Great, let us use it as a read-only replica. But how will I connect? You cannot connect using domain users because managed instance does not understand domain users. So the only way you can connect to your managed instance link is using SQL authentication, which might be restricted due to some kind of compliance that customers might have. So though there is a capability that you can use managed instance link for your read-only workloads, just because you cannot use uh, the Microsoft Entra authentication because the source does not have Microsoft Entra users and we, and the managed instance doesn't understand Windows logins. There is a, that is the problem we are trying to solve. So now what I'm trying to do is with this, uh, the help of supporting Windows authentication metadata, we are telling customers that you can continue to use your existing Windows logins and users without migrating them to Microsoft Entra by configuring the authentication metadata modes. So, so this will help you to address the read workloads, uh, the scenario that I just listed, where customers now can connect to managed instance link using their existing Windows and Windows logins and users, and they can continue to use managed instance link as a read-only replica for their workloads. Uh, along with that, it can also uh, provides a, like a seamless migration option because now you have different metadata modes which can be, can be configured for the managed instance. So I will be explaining what are the metadata modes that we have introduced, but using these metadata modes like Windows or paid method metadata mode, they do not have to bother about migrating their existing logins. What about, so, maybe you're going to yes. get to this, Ravani, but I'm curious, like, what about SQL Server 2022? How does this apply uh, in okay. that world? Yeah, so for SQL Server 2022, we already support Microsoft Entra authentication. So uh, for now, the uh, this metadata mode is not yet available, but our, our plan is to extend this to SQL Server 2022 as well. So that the similar scenario where you have 2017 and 2022 as a, like a availability group replicas right. so the exact scenario we will be able to address but right awesome. now we are only supporting it for the managed instance eventually we will support it for sql server 2022 as well mm -hmm. and the second feature that it is going to boost is the windows authentication which i already mentioned that went ga for a couple of years ago and uh when I'm talking about legacy applications, which are dependent on Windows authentication, they are not only dependent on Windows authentication, but they are also dependent on Windows logins and users. We have applications like certain examples like BizTalk or a few other applications where this uh, create login from Windows command is hard coded and there is no way customers can modify those commands, right? So those scenarios where you have legacy applications, which are tied to the Windows authentication and Windows logins and users, this is the best place for you where you can simply say that I'm going to use the authentication metadata mode as Windows so that the managed instance can understand Windows logins and users and still allow the application to authenticate. So oh, this is this is very beneficial in those scenarios where you cannot modernize their, modernize your applications because they are legacy and they are still dependent on Windows and uh, uh, Windows authentication and Windows logins 
uh, like I said, for even uh, SQL Server 2022, now we know that it supports Microsoft Entry Authentication. It's going to be beneficial when we enable these authentication metadata modes for SQL Server 2022 as well. So, so what kind of metadata modes that we have introduced, right? We have introduced, so the existing uh, metadata mode is basically Microsoft Entra mode which is the default mode for SQL Server managed instance. So what is Microsoft Entra mode? So once you migrate your database to managed instance, you have a Windows login, which is existing on your SQL Server, which is migrated to managed instance. So that Windows login will not work because the metadata that I have in my SQL database is related to Windows login metadata. So when you create a login from Windows, the metadata, whatever metadata is stored in the in the database is related to your Windows login account. And when I create a Microsoft Entra login, which is basically create login from external provider, the metadata is stored related to the Microsoft Entra user. So when I say metadata, what is this metadata, right? Metadata could be, it, is, it could be just the name, domain name, the SID, SID is the thing which we actually use to authenticate. So these are the attributes which we call it as metadata. And this metadata is stored inside SQL Server for the authentication techniques. So the Microsoft Entra metadata mode, which was the default metadata for managed instance. So whenever a login comes to the managed instance, irrespective of whether the whether it's coming as a Windows authentication or whether it's coming as a Microsoft Entra authentication, it will still look for the metadata that is related to your Microsoft Entra login metadata. So, which means I migrated my database, I have a login which is created from Windows. I try to connect using Windows authentication, it will fail. I try to connect using Microsoft Entra authentication, it will fail because I do not have metadata which tells me if this login is a valid login, right? Because it's a Windows login, but I am I don't understand Windows login in Microsoft Entra mode. So this is the default behavior today. Now with two new modes that we are introducing, one is Windows, one is paid. When I say the metadata mode is Windows, which means your metadata is created when the login is created using create login from Windows command. So with this metadata, whether the connection is coming as Windows authentication or it's coming as Microsoft Entra authentication, I will look at the metadata that is created from Windows and will internally retrieve all the details required for the Microsoft Entra login because this Windows and Microsoft Entra domains are already synchronized and we have all the attributes which are needed to authenticate are already synchronized. So we use an internal mechanism to retrieve those details, authenticate this login and grant you the connection. So this is how we are working in the backend. So based on customer's requirement, they can simply set it to Windows, which means they do not have to migrate any of their logins or uh, users from Windows to Microsoft Entra in SQL. However, there is a prerequisite that you have to still synchronize your uh, domain with the Microsoft Entra, which is a prerequisite. Otherwise, I don't understand like a native domain users, right? So once you set it to Windows, you do not have to do anything. You just migrate your database to managed instance and start continue using your existing logins. You can connect using either Windows authentication, it will work, or you connect using Microsoft Entra, it just works. You don't have to do anything. This scenario is pretty much applicable when you have these legacy applications where you do not really have to use Microsoft Entra authentication techniques like MFA, password, nothing. You just want to use Windows, right? In that scenario, this is this is applicable. And you can, we also uh, started supporting uh, create login from Windows command or a create a Windows user command, which means customers, whoever has this legacy application, they can simply do that. And apart from that, we also introduced a new mode, which is a paid mode. This is, this is like a default mode for SQL Server, where you have both logins, like 2022 has both logins, right? It can have Windows logins, it can have Microsoft Entra logins, 
what happens in paired mode is basically when authentication comes from windows authentication it looks for windows metadata if the authentic authentication is coming from a microsoft enter authentication it looks for microsoft enter metadata so this is called paired mode so this is applicable where you have a mix of applications that needs both authentications you can simply set it to paired so this mode is only supported uh, for sql server uh, 2022 and SQL Server versions still now, but now uh, with this uh, new feature, we are going to support this mode even for the SQL managed instance. Awesome. Sravani, I learned so much. I think a lot of people are going to be really excited about this new capability in Azure SQL Managed Instance, native Windows principles. Uh, folks, you heard about it here, maybe first. Uh, we hope this video is useful. If you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know if you're trying out native Windows principles, and we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Uh, thanks for joining us on Data Exposed.